Okay, our text this morning, we're going to just read one verse out of our text. Matthew chapter 4, and we're going to read one verse. And let's read it together, verse 19. Ready? And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And uh, this is my message, stop wishing and start fishing. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Help us, Lord, to be fishers of men. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, last week, I just scratched the surface on it. But today, I want to continue on this message entitled, Stop Wishing and Start Fishing. Um, you know, there's fishing season in Canada. Uh, you can't uh, go and catch pickerel at a certain time or, or, or bass at a certain time. Spawning season, it's illegal for you to catch any fish. If they're spawning, you can't catch them. Uh, folks, listen to me. Uh, uh, soul, fishing for souls has no season. Amen? Uh, if I want to catch a soul, uh, fish for a soul, we must have our rod out, our spiritual rod. By the way, our spiritual rod is the Word of God. And so we must cast it, and that means go ye, right? We must go out there and cast it. Uh, by the way, again, uh, uh, no, uh, you can't catch... Uh, you can catch any fish, but you must have the right bait. The right bait is the gospel. A lot of people, they try to win the people to their church instead of God. And all you have to do is go cast. I mean, if somebody falls asleep, I could just like, there you go. Jim's got an itchy ear, <laughs> itchy head. <laughs> Sarah, wake up now. <laughs> um, but but oh, oh, I like having this pole. <laughs> it's a long pole. Uh, but my dear friends, uh, uh, heaven, the, the, the gospel pole is a long pole. It'll reach anybody. It doesn't matter who it is, they'll reach it. It'll reach it. Amen? Uh, our fishing pole is the gospel of Christ, and, and our bait is, is the, uh, our fishing pole is the word of God. Our God bait is the gospel of Christ. When was the last time you go went fishing? I love to fish. I love the real fish, for little fish, like the ones that go in the river. But I love to fish for souls. I was in Toronto last week and uh, preaching at a church, and they said, "Pray for church growth." Well, you know what? We're you can pray for church growth, but you need to go fish for church growth. Amen. I say, and I remember what I said last week. If you're going soul winning to populate Lighthouse Baptist Church, you're going soul winning, fishing for the wrong reason. Amen. A passion for souls. Where? Heaven. Not just, not just like, it doesn't say Lighthouse Baptist Church, uh, albeit I'd love to have this place filled every Sunday with uh, with a whole pile of people. Amen? I'd love to have uh, Brother Freddie's mom and dad here and his, her, his, her sister, sorry, brother, his sister here and, and uh, his, his whole family here and his neighbors here. And I'd love to have Jim, Ma, Jim's dad here. Your dad's still alive? Is he still alive? No, his, his mom here and his brother here and his brother's girlfriend here. I'd love to have uh, Sarah's family here. I'd love to have Tamara's family here. I'd love to have this place packed out like sardines and then people say, Preacher, we are too, this place is too small. Let's get a building. I'd love that. But I would rather uh, populate heaven first. Uh, take care of God's business and he'll take care of Lighthouse Baptist Church's business. Amen? Uh, uh, you know, uh, God, God is a good God. He still has, he's the best, by the way, he is the best fisherman. Because didn't he say, follow me? That's Christ. I have words of, uh, my Bible's a red letter edition and it's in red. Follow me. Christ said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. In other words, hey, do what I do and you'll be prosperous. You'll catch a lot of fish. I like what they said. And I like what the Bible says next. Immediately, they didn't think about it. They just went. Well, I got to think about being a soul winner. Are you? No. Anyways, uh, I, excuse, I said everybody makes excuses. Has made it, has, uh, not everybody. I said, uh, what I said was is excuses are made every day. Something to that effect. Uh, you know, every, everybody has made an excuse one time or another not to go soul winning. How many people have ever made an excuse not to go soul winning? Raise your hand. <laughs> we have all have. 
And excuses are like belly buttons. Everyone's got one, and they're good for nothing. Amen? Your belly, uh, well, on fat people to collect navel in, but that's about it, you know. Um, they're good for nothing. I want to talk to you today, continue today, about, how, about fishing and how to apply the knowledge to change the future of our church and others' lives by fishing instead of wishing. I, I wish that our church would grow. What are you doing? I'm praying that our church will grow. What are you doing for? How many people invited somebody to church this week? Raise your hand. Yeah. Well, come on now. Number one. By the way, before I get into number one, fishing is not only the pastor's duty, it's all our duty. It's not a calling. We're not called to go fishing. We're not called to put that fishing pole in the water. I want to go fishing. Man, I, man I'm, i got to get my license this year. I want to go fishing. By the way, you don't catch everything every time you go out. But it doesn't stop you from going out the next time. You know, we go out soul winning, we knock on doors, like casting lines. Oh, oh got away. Phone call, got away. Man, I, how many people have gone out soul winning and you had somebody right at that, right at that edge of, 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 of accepting Christ and the phone rang. I, I, that's happened to me several times. One time I... The person asked my silent partner, can you answer that and tell them I'm not available? So when a partner, my, 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 my silent partner, he said, okay, <laughs> hello, um, he's not available at this point in time, can take a message. Man, that person really wanted to get saved. He was a hungry fish. And sometimes we cast our, uh, I remember I was fishing down at the Grand River and this big, huge, you know fishing stories, the, the fish this big is usually this big. Well, this fish was about, a boat that big, wasn't it, girls? We, it, it, I, I, threw my, I threw my line in the water and as, it was, as the, the worm was going by in the air, this fish jumped out, just missed my, man, I, I snapped and it got away. Man, and it was a big fish. It wasn't this little minnow. It was a big fish. It would have made a good meal. Amen? But then you get the big catch. The one that you... And you're fighting to get it in. And you're fighting to get it in. And when you get in, man, it's good. Out those are the souls that you try to win and try to win and try to win. And you ever gotten one that has a... How many people have ever gone fishing? Raise your hand. You ever gotten one that has a scar on its cheek? You know what that is? That's a recatch. It's already been caught. That's like winning. That's like... That's like uh, by the way, you, you don't... When you go out, go fishing, you don't fish for the un, just for a certain type of fish. You fish for any fish that will bite. When you go soul winning, you don't go, well, I'm just trying to go and pick the new fruit. Sometimes we go soul winning and the fruit has already been picked, plucked, done, and they're damaged because they're, they're already saved, but they're, they're away from the Lord. We don't say, well, ooh, your damaged goods, don't, I don't want you near me. You know what? Everybody is a damaged goods, so to speak. We all sin. You know, I like bringing folks back I like being able to help folks to come back to God. Amen. Uh, I remember there was this one young lady I, I was able to, to help win. and uh, Well, not win, but bring back. And uh, God, God you, uh, she said, I'm a Christian. And I said, really? And uh, I didn't know she was a Christian. But my dear friends, she was, I, I was able to be used to be brought back. Uh, bring her back to the Lord. And, uh, uh, and, and now she's viable. She's, 
She's a viable uh, staff member at our church. She is our financial secretary. I'm glad I went fishing that day. I'm glad I went fishing that day for 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 uh, Freddie. Freddie was looking for a, a, a new church home, and uh, uh, Freddie went. I, fair to say, you went to church maybe once a month. Amen. And uh, you've been you've been to church three times. Three times you were at church three times last week. God bless you. Amen. And that's a good. Every time the church doors open, he was here. Uh, guess what? We brought him back. Amen. Uh, Tamara, uh, she wasn't saved when she came here, but she was part of another church. And then for several years, while she lived in town, she didn't go to any church. We we had talked about her. We had asked her to come and asked her to come, and uh, she went to two good churches. Both. Past I know very well. Never got saved, but that the 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 the, the she nibbled on the worm and got the worm. Amen. And uh, you know nobody loves me. Everybody hates me. Think no. Anyway, uh, but she 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 got the worm, but she she uh, but she spit it out, and she didn't eat it. And uh, the worm being the gospel of Christ, and and. Uh, uh, I, I mean, I'm going to get attacked for using that as a as a as an analogy, but tough. Uh, but my dear friends, we have to realize that all fish, whether they're uh, saved or unsaved, we must go get. Amen. To, uh, uh, Sarah, are you glad I went fishing that day? Hey, uh, Freddie, are you glad we went fishing that day? Amen. Well, folks, listen to me. Hey, Tamara, are you glad we went fishing that day? Jim, Jim, we went fishing that day. Jim came to church. We were in the old building. We were in the upper loft. We were meeting at a Thursday night Bible study. He came in to get his nephew out because he uh, out of the church service to, to, so he could help move. Well, guess what? Jim, I can count on one hand how many services Jim missed. Literally, I can count on one hand in Four, four years probably four, about four years in four years how many services he's missed one because he got burned out of his house I went to go get him I went to go visit him at the hospital right after church he brought him back he stayed at my house because well his 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 house was a little charcoal and uh, and, and I remember what he asked what'd you preach on tonight I preached the message back to him, and he was still smelling like smoke. Not cigarette smoke. Smoke, smoke from my house. Fire. Folks, it is all our duties to go, uh, it's all our duties to go fishing. Every one of us. Number one, the place to fish. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, But ye shall receive power. Write this down. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses, or fishermen, uh, 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 unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. We have opportunity, ample opportunity and ample places to go fishing. My friends, fishing season is always open. Amen. You know, you could go fishing at, 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 the, at the Catholic church. I was at a Catholic funeral, visiting somebody's funeral, and I gave, I gave gospel tracts. So I gave the priest a gospel tract. I gave him a gospel tract, chick tract, why is Mary crying? I gave that to him. I went fishing. I went fishing. I went fishing for the big guns. I think if you go fishing for those who are in the position of supposed to be spiritual leadership, who are, who are not saved, who are going after another gospel, those are the big guns. The big fish. Man, I put that in... You know, hey, I, it's, it, it is not... It is our duty. When I go fishing, I don't say to those fish, you, I don't grab that fish by the tail... And put that fish's hook, or the hook in the fish's mouth. It is up to that fish to bite. And it's but 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 when you catch a fish on the line, if you know how to fish, when that you see that little that your 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 see like see how the end look at the end of the rod when it goes like this, you got something on it. When it starts to twitch, what do you do? You jerk back, right, Hannah? You jerk back, and man, it it catches. And you jerk back to the right, depending on which way, 
depending on if you could see if your pole is going that way, if it pulls that way, you jerk back to this way. And if it goes this way, you jerk back to that way. And you get that thing on. And what do you do? You reel it in. And you know what? I don't care. I, I don't care if it's a little minnow. We went fishing up in, uh, up in Lindsay. And, man, we got little fish. We got, what, four or five little fish. And I went fishing where the fish were. <laughs> Amen. You don't go fishing in the bathtub. You don't go fishing in a swimming pool. Amen? Piranha. Amen? Throw a few piranha in there. Go fishing. You want to go swimming? Uh, you go fishing where the swim fish are swimming. And we were at the dock, and we saw all these fish, these nice-sized fish, right around the edge of the dock. Well, where did I cast my line? Bloop. Right over the edge. Right there. Man, I'm looking. He goes up, gets it. <clears throat> Got it. Man, it was good. It was good. When you catch that fish and you, it don't matter how big you been, it could be a little minnow and you're proud of yourself. Hey Amen? You get it up there. You just got a fish right there. And it's like that big. Sardine is bigger. Hey Amen? My, you know, my pinky is bigger than that fish. But you, I mean, you like it. You like it. We must always look for the opportunities to share the gospel with somebody. Let me ask you a question. Someone, or let me make a statement. Let me make two statements, and they're both very blunt, as you know what I can be. Somebody went fishing for you. Let me ask you a question. Are you glad that they did? Who led you to the Lord, brother? Your friend. Aren't you glad he put that fishing line out? Oh, here's ready. <laughs> Do you know a fish doesn't, very rarely do you catch a fish on the first nibble? Very rarely do you catch a fish on the first nibble. He nibbles a few times at it. Very rarely does a Christian get saved on the first time they hear the gospel. Let's look at, look, where, where, where a place to fish, let's look at our, our Acts 1-8 again. In Jerusalem, that's our city. That's everybody. Doesn't matter what nationality they are, that is everybody. If they've got a pulse, go try to win them. Hey Amen? Until a person is dead, they are not beyond salvation. A murderer can get saved. A punk rocker can get saved. A, a, a Satan worshiper can get saved. A Catholic priest can get saved. Anybody can get saved. But they're going to want to change. Their life will, evidence, will, will show evidence of salvation. It doesn't matter what... Uh, the, uh, in all Judea, that means everybody in Ontario. In Samaria, that means Canada. And the other most parts of the world, that means world missions. It doesn't matter what country or nationality they are. Everybody needs Christ. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It, well, no, for everybody but Filipinos have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You Filipinos would be happy on that one, wouldn't you? Amen? Uh, uh, but that's not what it says. Hey, for all women have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Us men would be like, yeah, that's right. Hey, for all men have have, have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The women be like, pack that preacher. Uh, you know, everybody, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Nobody is, a, is beyond being a sinner. Everybody is a sinner. I'm going to say that again. Everybody is a sinner. We must reach our neighbors, the people in our city, the people in the entire world. We must, we, and by the way, we reach the entire world by supporting missions. I think everybody should support a missionary. Should support missions. Put a couple bucks in the plate for missions. Set it aside. Five bucks, ten bucks, twenty bucks. We have somebody in this church that gives $145 usually every week towards world missions. That's pretty good. When he, get, when he, when he or she's got a, a, an offering in the plate, is, I guarantee you, usually there's 145 set aside for world missions, if not more. 
Over 50% of our, was it 49%? Was it 49%, I think? 49% or so, uh, or no, was it 49 or 51 percent? 49 or 51%, around 50% of what comes in is given towards world missions. You know what? I think we've got it down pat. But we need to go win them. We need to pray for world missions. We need to pray for souls being saved. There's no better feeling spiritually besides your own salvation to lead than, lead when, you, than when you lead somebody to Christ. You have been used to, to, to change somebody's eternity. I want you to make this, I want you to write this statement down. I want you to circle it. I'm going to be making this statement several times after each point. You won't catch any fish if you don't put your fishing pole in the water. You won't catch any fish if you don't put your fishing pole in the water. Well, uh, Brother Brother Freddie, I hope I'm going to catch some fish down the river today. Want to go to Tim Hortons? That won't happen. Hey, hey, Sarah, I want to catch some fish today. Freddie and I are going to Tim Hortons. I want to catch a largemouth bass. Come here. No. <laughs> You, you can't, uh, Elsie. I, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna go catch some fish today. But I'm gonna take a nap. I hope I'm gonna catch some fish. Man, you can't catch fish if your pole ain't in the water. Amen. You understand what I'm saying, folks? Amen. Number two, the purpose of fishing. The purpose of fishing. It's pretty easy, isn't it? Yeah, but why don't we do it? If, if, bro, bro, Brother Freddie, why don't we do it? If it's easy, why don't we do it? Hey, Amen. You ever wondered that? Elsie, you ever wondered that? If it's so easy, why don't we do it? Luke chapter 4, 14, verse 23 says, And the Lord saith unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. The purpose of fishing is to fill the God's house. It is to fill God's house. Luke 19.10 says, For the Son of Man is seeking to save that which is lost. Listen to me, folks. If we go, I, I, I'm going to make a statement, and please don't misunderstand me. I want our church to grow, but soul winning is not to populate Lighthouse Baptist Church. It's to populate heaven, God's house. Lighthouse Baptist Church is God's living room, I guess, or whatever you want to call it, but it, it, heaven. It's to populate heaven. You know, you can go to Lighthouse Baptist Church and be all and be a, you know be a member, uh, you know, so I'm saved and not really be saved and be a member and give and give and give and give and give and sing and 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 put up a banner and play the piano or computer piano or whatever the case may be. Be a door greeter, be an usher, uh, uh, push the senior citizens to the to their rooms. You can do all that, but if you're not saved, guess what? It's all done in vain. You're going to wind up in hell. I would rather populate heaven than Lighthouse Baptist Church. Guess what? Because God will take care of business. I believe if here, if, if us here at Lighthouse Baptist Church have the right attitude when we go soul winning, God will add to our church numerically. Acts 2.47, praising God and having favor with all people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Amen. Hey, wouldn't, you be glad, wouldn't it be glad if, if uh, let's say, uh, Ernie... I like Ernie. Ernie's cool. Imagine Ernie coming here, walking through the church doors tonight. How would that make you feel? He's your friend. That would make you feel good. Hey, how would it make you feel if Ernie got up and, or Bob or Hector or Luigi or whoever it is that you've invited to come up, uh, your dad, to come to church and then when I give an altar call, stand up. When I say, if you're not saved here today, you want to know how to be saved, just come on up. We'll get somebody to lead you to the Lord. How would it make you feel if the one that you invited to church walks up and says, I need salvation? Well, well, well. let me throw the fish back. 
Hey, God doesn't throw fish back. He's not a catch and release type of guy. Now, I'm all for catch and release the fishing in the river if they're small enough, not small enough to eat or if it's a dirty river. If they're good enough, they're the right size to eat. There's nothing like a fresh fish. Amen? Man, I went gone fishing. There's nothing. When we used to go fishing down to Brighton Bay. You could eat those fish when I was a kid. And man, we, we, we went fishing. And we got fish. Large mouth bass. They were Baptist preacher bass. And they were good. They were good. We must have the right attitude about who really is winning the souls to the saving knowledge of Christ. Folks, it's not you. You're the hammer to build the house. It is Christ that does the swinging. We are just the means to the end. A great commission says that Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and earth. We're just the, we're just the tool. Man, I'm a tool. Amen. How many people are tools? Raise your hand. Amen. Not a not a, um, not, not the I'm a tool, but I'm a tool. He'd be like, "Come here, Freddie. I'm gonna use you." He's the he's the pole. I'm using the he's the line. Thank you, brother. You know, uh, God is casting us out to the. Go ye therefore. In other words, you got a bobber on the end of your line there. I was bobbing around. Oh, there's a fish. Can you imagine the the on the worm? Oh, oh. oh, oh. You're dead, you know. Folks, let God control where you go. You know, that worm doesn't say, Oh, I don't want to go there, I don't want to go there. He goes. He goes where he's told to go, where he's casted. We need to go in his power. Sometimes it's easy to lead somebody to Christ. Sometimes it needs a little work. And sometimes... We have to save them with fear. Jude 23. So saving others, or sorry, and others save with fear. You know what, folks? Never give up on getting some, on, on seeing somebody be saved. Who was it? Uh, was it um, Coco Chan? The eight, 80 years? 35 years. 35 years. Her mother was 80 years old. 35 years witnessing to her mother. 30 Five years. She didn't give up. They got a pulse. They got breath. They got a chance. They got a pulse. They got a breath. They got a chance. Flip your Bibles to Mark chapter 4, please. Parable of the sower. There are several types of people found in this parable. The first one is found in verse 4, Mark chapter 4, verse 4, and it says, And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured them up. Those are the people who heard the gospel and didn't get saved. Okay? There are people that will sit as our church grows. And there are people that will sit in church and they'll sit there and they might look the part and they might they might sing, Oh, bringing in the sheets, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, rock of ages, cleft for me, saved by his power. They might sing all the songs. They may look like a Christian. They may talk like, Brother, how you doing? Brother, God bless you. They may, they may talk the part. They may look the part. But they're not saved. I preached at a church one time. And the preacher's son got saved. The preacher was floored. And by the way, the preacher's son was the assistant pastor. 
he got saved. The second group is found in verse 5 and 6, and it says, And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately sprang up, because it had no depth of the earth. But when, when, but when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Those who got saved, but an offense came up, and they just, they leave. They never grow. Maybe an offense doesn't come up, but they just never grow. They just they wither away. They leave. They don't. They they sit in church and they may throw a couple bucks in the plate and they they may say, "Well, I'll tithe when I can afford it," or you know, "I'll go to hey when it's convenient, I'll go to the men's meeting." Don't make me go to the men's meeting, preacher. And they don't grow, and then they leave. Hey, you get upset at work, do you leave? Do you leave? Well, pardon me, Freddie? <laughs> if you found another job, yeah. But, you know, Freddie was down in North Carolina. Oh, I'm walking back from North Carolina. Good, have fun, buddy. Call me, preacher, I'm in North Carolina, about 20 miles north of Raleigh. I'm walking back to Brantford. Can you come pick me up? God bless you. Have a fun walk, buddy. <laughs> but they just leave. They leave for no apparent reason. They just gone. And by the way, those are the type of people that never ever tell you why they leave. They just leave. And those are the type of people maybe we should just let leave. Sorry, that's just a sidebar. The third ones are found in verse what verse? Seven. Seven. Some fell among the thorns, and the, and the thorns grew up and choked, and they yielded no fruit. Those are the ones that don't put past their, their, their pet sins behind them. They don't grow. The thorns are sins. By the way, a thorn will always pull you that thorns will always pull you down they'll they'll they they try to stand up brother they'll hold you down and and eventually they'll overgrow sorry don't mean to do this but they'll overgrow and they'll take you down and you'll die spiritually don't let your sins your pet sins pull you down Here, sinny, 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 sinny. <laughs> Don't do that. Come here, boy. We do that to our sins. We invite them back into our lives when after we're saved. Get rid of them. And uh, here's the success stories. Stories are so-called success stories. Uh, found in verse eight, and I, and others uh, and others fell on good ground and yielded fruit and sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some 100. Notice they're not all getting the same increase. I don't know about you, but I want to get be richly blessed. Amen? You want to be richly blessed? You want to be blessed a hundredfold? I do. I want to see thousands of souls in heaven because we cared for them. Uh, my, my prayer is to see 2,013 souls saved this year. I want to see that. That's a lofty goal. It can be done. <laughs> Amen? We are to catch several types of fish, but none of them are out of season. We are to catch the lost fish. In Luke chapter 19, verse 10, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. We are to catch the lawless fish, found in, in, in Matthew 12, uh, 18, eight, sorry, 18, verse 12 and 13. How, uh, how think ye, if a man had a hundred sheep and one of them gone astray, doth not he leave the ninety and nine and go into the mountains and seeketh the one who's gone astray? And if he so find it, verily I send to you, he rejoices rejoiceth more than of that sheep than the ninety ninety which had not gone astray, which went not astray. We must seek those who are souls that are unsaved. We must also uh, uh, have uh, try to seek those that have, have strayed and are saved. We are we are to, to to our spiritual babies. Don't let them become orphans. 
Don't leave it to the preacher to teach your spiritual babies how to grow up. You must do them. Encourage them in the Lord. Encourage them in the Great Commission. Help the pastor help them to grow in, in the Lord. We are to catch the lawless fish, those who feel unloved, those who, are, who don't care, who just feel nobody cares for them. 1 John 4, 4 11 says, beloved if, uh, be, beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also love one another. There are people who just need to feel like somebody cares for them. Seriously. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. They, they don't. Would you, that's why you put a nice tasty worm on, the, on your hook for the fish. You care for them. You want, you want their last meal to be a good one. Amen? <laughs> Love them. Love them. If a, it is a nat, by the way, it's a natural person's, sorry, it's a person's natural desire to feel loved. If people, sorry, there will be people that come to this church that feel like nobody cares for them. And we must show them that we care for them. And love them no matter what. You know, if you love somebody because they loved you, there's a problem. It's not love. I love everybody who's come here to this church. I love people who have even attacked our church. I still love them. If Freddie gets mad and punches me in the mouth and leaves, I'm still going to love him. Now, I might have a fat lip, but I'm still going to love him. We must, when we realize just how huge the purpose for us to go fishing is, then we just then we might be able to be used to help and make a dent in those hurting souls. Again, what's that theme that I told you to, what's that saying that I said you told for you to circle? You won't catch fish if you don't put your fishing pole in the water. The perseverance of fishing. I'm going to finish this up this morning. The perseverance of fishing in Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 says, and whosoever, or sorry, whatsoever you do in word and deed, actually, you know what? I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop this morning. I'm going to do the last two next week. Folks, listen to me. You won't catch fish if you don't put your pole in the water. Don't. What better way? You know, Freddie, you're saved, right? Uh, are you perfect? Millionaire? M this side of heaven, no. Um... Ta opera singer, talented opera singer, no. Concert pianist. Do you feel loved? Yes. Yeah. We love him in spite of him not being any of those. Sarah, you a talented opera singer, talented singer, pianist, uh, multimillionaire this side of heaven. Hey, this side of heaven. Uh, you are a multimillionaire this side of heaven? God, where are you keeping the money, Mama? <laughs> Good night. Uh, Jim, are you a multimillionaire this side of heaven? Uh, a wonderful singer? Talented person? Like, multi-talented? Like, you could, you could play the piano and sing and, you know, all that? No, why? They've got... When you truly love somebody, you truly love them, even if they can't give you anything. Tamara, I love you. You're my, you're my daughter in Christ. You have nothing I want. Nothing. I probably have a lot which you would like. iPad, a computer, all the other things. Uh, but... I love you in spite you can't give me anything. The only thing she can give me is her love back. Christ gave his love to us, right? Okay? The Bible says, if ye love me, what? Keep my commandments. 
What does that mean? You're given back to him. One of the commandments, and again, the greatest omission is soul winning. Go ye therefore. In other words, go get your pole. Go get your pole and start fishing. I have decided to follow Jesus. If God spoke to your heart, come on, come on up. I have decided, maybe you don't love people enough to go fishing, to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Maybe there's somebody that you have not one, you have not even attempted to win to the Lord, but this week you're going to say, Preacher, I'm going to do that. God, I'm going to do this. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, maybe my family's not following me or following you, still I will follow. Maybe it's pretty lonely. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. You know, the loneliest place on this earth ever was Jesus at Calvary. Our Heavenly Father. Oh, Lord, help us to be fishers. Men. We need to be that way. Jesus' name. Amen.